friends in our last episode we were discussing about the collection of data in that episode we had discussed about the census method of collection of data and the errors that may arise during the collection of data in today's episode we will discuss about the sample method of collection of data suppose we want to find the average income of people in a certain region according to the census method we would be required to find out incomes of every individual in the region and add them up and divide by the number of individuals in the region this method would require huge expenditure as a large number of enumerators have to be involved and results may be contaminated by the kinds of errors which we discussed in the last episode instead we may adopt the sample method accordingly we select a representative sample of a few individuals from the region and find out their income the average income of the selected group of individuals is used as an estimate of the average income of the individuals in the whole region in general according to the sample method we select a representative sample of a few individual units from the population and obtain the estimate of the population characteristics on the basis of the sample data for example we may estimate the yield of wheat in punjab by obtaining the output of wheat in a few selected fields we may estimate the volume of timber in a certain forest by felling a few selected trees in the forest and so on the sample method has the following advantages number 1 the cost of the survey would be much smaller than in complete enumeration number 2 the collection of data their tabulation and analysis would take much less time number 3 the magnitude of errors described above would be much smaller number 4 we need a smaller team of enumerators and it is easier to intensively train them closely supervise their field work and guard against probable errors when we use the sample method to draw inferences about population characteristics another kind of error is introduced this is called the sampling error the errors which we discussed in the last episode that is the measurement errors recording mistakes etc are called non sampling errors for example the estimate of the average income of people in a certain region obtained on the basis of incomes of smaller set of individuals included in the representative sample will not be equal to the true average income of people in the region the difference between the sample estimate and the true average income in the region is called the sampling error it should be noted that several sets of representative samples from the population can be drawn each one will give a different estimate of the population characteristic the average income variability in of income etc this is called fluctuation due to sampling or sampling fluctuation let us take an example consider a hypothetical case where there are only 5 farmers in a village the variable x that is the income of farmers has measurements 500 550 600 650 700 we we'll note that the population average of 500 plus 550 plus 600 plus 650 plus 700 divided by 5 is equal to 600 now suppose we select a sample of two farmers where x has measurements of 500 plus 600 divided by 2 is equal to 1100 divided by 2 is equal to 550 hence the sampling error of the estimate is equal to 600 true value minus 550 the estimate is equal to 
Thus, the essential requirement of the sample method is that the sample must be representative of the population with regard to the characteristic under consideration. For example, suppose we want to estimate the average income of people in a certain city. We know that there are exclusive areas in the city where very rich people live and there are clusters of hutments of very poor people. There are middle class residents also and so on. Our sample must reflect the diversity of incomes. If our sample includes most people from a particular segment, very rich or very poor, our estimate of the average income would show an upward or downward bias. Similarly, while finding an estimate of yield of wheat in Punjab, we should guard against selecting only large or small farms and so on. Friends, now we will discuss some of the methods of drawing representative samples. Let us start with the random sampling method. At the outset, we need to understand that random sampling does not mean haphazard sampling where no rules of selection are followed. In fact, random sampling is based on a purely scientific technique. Random sampling requires that every individual unit in the population gets equal chance of being included in the sample. The selection procedure must guarantee this property. This can be done by using the lottery method or by using random number tables. Let us first discuss the lottery method. Suppose there are 50 students in our class and we require to select a random sample of 5. We may adopt following procedures. First of all, we prepare 50 slips, papers of identical shapes and size. Then we write the names of students on the slips, one each student. After that, we place the prepared slips in a box and thoroughly mix them. Finally, without looking in the box, we draw 5 slips. The students whose names appear on the slips drawn constitute the required random sample. In lotteries, tickets bought by the people are numbered. They are put in a box and mixed mechanically. Then a required number of tickets are drawn. People holding counterfoils of tickets bearing the numbers drawn are the winners. However, there are certain limitations of the lottery method. First of all, the lottery method may become cumbersome if the number of the individual units in the population is too large. For example, the lottery method cannot be used if we want to draw a random sample of 50 birds from a sanctuary or 50 fish from a river or 50 leaves from a neem tree. Secondly, it may not be possible to use the lottery method if the size of the population is infinite. Another method of random sampling is by using the random numbers. We use random numbers to draw a random sample in many cases. The random numbers have been generated by specific mathematical methods to guarantee equal possibility of selection of every individual unit in the population. The random numbers have been published in the form of books and can also be generated by using appropriate software packages. The important property of random number tables is that we may open the book at any page and start reading the numbers row wise or column wise from any point. The numbers so obtained are random numbers. We may use two digit, three digit or four digit random numbers as required. A specimen of the random number table is given in the appendix of your statistics textbook. The second method of drawing a random sample is through stratified random sampling. This method requires that we subdivide the whole population into a number of homogeneous strata and draw a fixed proportion say 1% or half percent, etc., of individual units from.
from each stratum by the random sampling method. This method is used when the population is not homogeneous with regard to the characteristic under investigation. For example, to estimate the average income of people in a city, we may identify homogeneous strata that is the areas where very rich, middle class and poor people live. Then select a fixed proportion of individual units from each stratum. The homogeneity of each stratum with regard to the characteristic under investigation is the essential feature of this method. Thus friends, we have studied today that economic facts expressed in terms of numbers are called data. The purpose of data collection is to understand, explain and analyze a problem and causes behind it. Primary data is obtained by conducting a survey. The data already collected, processed, tabulated and published are secondary sources. The objective of the study thus determines the choice of source of data and mode of data collection. Hope you have understood about the methods of data collection and thus friends we have already studied about the meaning of statistical data and its use in the study of economics. We have also discussed about the types of the data that is the primary data and the secondary data and we have also studied the methods of collection of data that is the census method and the sample method. Thank you.